All right, welcome back to the 30-hour post-licensing course. We are going to start the ninth lesson plan here. And this whole section, we're going to talk about goal planning for your success. Now, I'm going to tell you that there is an entire four or five hour course that I teach that deals strictly with just goal planning. We are not going to spend that much time in this course dealing with establishing your goals. I will tell you that your success depends entirely on this section right here. Uh, I am a big proponent of establishing goals. And there are going to be goals throughout your life that you probably should have, including spiritual goals. You know, how are you dealing with God? Relationship goals between you and your spouse, or maybe you boyfriend or girlfriend. There are going to be educational goals for you. There might be physical goals, losing weight, gaining weight, getting stronger. We are only going to discuss in this very short time frame business goals. We're going to talk a little bit about your business goals. And I'm not saying that you should alleviate or forget any of the other goals because well-rounded is going to be the best answer for you at all times. And there are web pages out there that can help you decide and determine these. There was one that I looked at was pretty cool. It broke it down into like six areas. And then each area you gained a score between two and five. And then you graph that on a circular graph and you could easily see which goal was lacking because the circle wasn't um, perfect. Imagine, if you will, five or six spokes going out like on a bicycle tire and then the numbers one being closest to the center and 10 being the furthest out. And then you rated each one of your goals as to where you thought you were on that goal, a two or a six or a one. And then you just connected the points around the six spokes and if it turned out to be a perfect circle, you were well balanced. If you saw a marked indent in one of the areas, that would then tell you which goal was probably your number one to concentrate on. So you can find all kinds of stuff out there. Uh, at the Modulin Group, I actually have several workbooks that deal with this and require my agents to complete the worksheets to help them determine their goals. So when it says what goals should you establish, I think you should establish goals throughout your entire life in every area of your life, okay? We are only going to discuss business goals right here. And when it comes to discussing business goals, I get asked all the time, what is the more, most important business goal? Well, I would love to sit here and tell you the altruistic answer that all of these are equal. Now, remember, it's from a business standpoint. So the most important goal to me is that. All right. Now, I'm not, I'm just being realist. I understand that if you're listening to this course, you're in real estate. So therefore, you love real estate. If you don't love real estate, then you probably shouldn't be in this business, okay? If you're only doing it for the money, that's a problem. So inherently, I am assuming that your goals are to have a successful career, to give your service clients the best service, to perform all the deals in an ethical and professional manner. So that is going to be a level playing field across the board for all of us out of the gate, because that is my assumption that we are doing. Right now I'm talking about money because that seems to be the single biggest thing. And what if you don't believe me, try paying your IPL power bill with your <clears throat> likes on Facebook or your reviews on Google, all right? It's good to have those as a goal, but the reality is this is what unfortunately makes the world go round. So let's be realistic with each other during this process and realize that this seems to be the most important goal to everybody. Now, when it comes to establishing this goal, there are several ways. 
And one of the ways, obviously, is if you're leaving a job and that job used to pay 75000 then obviously your goal is going to be at least 75000 okay? Now, one of the things we talk about is being realistic. If you're in your second year and your goal is to make $2.8 million, I'm not saying that it can't be done, but that does not seem realistic. And as your managing broker, I would probably try and dissuade you from that because this number is going to require a large number of deals that someone in their second year probably isn't prepared to do. Not that you don't maybe have the high emotional intelligence or that you may not have the technique. It's the simple fact of the sheer numbers. To do 2.8 million, you know, you're talking four or 500 closings and physically you can't do that without some kind of help, which means you've been recruiting and you've got assistants and transaction coordinators. And my guess is you don't. I'm not saying it can't be done and there may be one of you listening that is doing this. I'm just saying that's not a realistic goal to begin with. But if you created some sort of realistic goal and understand that, hey, my goal is to at least replace my income that I left from whatever world. Now we at least have some kind of number to start with. Now here's one thing that I will tell you and you can take this to the bank. Money is directly proportional to activity. Plain and simple, that's all it is, all right? The layman might say it's a numbers game. It truly is a numbers game. Now, I used to own a Century 21. It was called Century 21 Preferred Properties, downtown Indianapolis, long before any of the other Century 21s were down there. And Century 21 was really good on having these conversion numbers. I still hope they do, and if they don't, that's a shame. If they don't, you guys can probably determine these uh, conversion factors. And what I mean by that is, how many people do you need to talk to to get a listing appointment? Is it three to one? So therefore, for every one listing appointment, I have to talk to three people. Well, every, let's just play this game, every three listing appointments gets me one listing. So therefore, I need to talk to nine people to get one listing. You now have some kind of conversion factor that shows you your activity for the day, if you want a listing every day, or the week, perhaps the month, all right? Seems a little low if you're full-time and you're only wanting to get one listing a month, but now you most certainly can go, well, I want one a week, so that's four. Four times nine is 36 people that I have to talk to this month, all right? Now you have a, some sort of activity plan. So in your goals, you might write that as 36 people you need to talk to. Well, if I wanna to talk to, you know, just during the day, during the weekday, I might divide that by, you know, the four weeks or the 20 days, 20 weekdays in a month and realize I need to talk to, you know, almost one and a half people a day. If these numbers were correct, that's the assumption, talking to one and a half people a day is going to lead you to that one listing. Now, you've also got this conversion of what, how, how many listings does it take to actually have a closing? That's a whole separate conversion. And typically listings are almost one for one. Buyers are probably two for one, maybe three for one. Meaning you have to have three buyer offers to actually get one closed. Could be different in this market. So you got to keep that in mind when you're listing. Most of the time you list a property, it's going to sell. Here about half the time or a third of the time will your buyer offers be accepted. Now, that's just numbers I'm throwing out. 
could be different. Don't take that to the bank. But if that's the case, you got to go back down here and realize then, okay, to get that one listing, I had to talk to nine people, but I actually need three listings to get one to sell. Therefore, it becomes 27 people to get a closing. So what you need to do is actually calculate backwards to determine activity. If you realize you want to make, let's say 75,000 and each closing you make three grand, I gotta have 25 closings, 25 closings divided by 12. You know, I need two a month and that two a month now can say I need two closings a month and we go back to this and realize it took nine people to get that listing. So I'm gonna need 18. <clears throat> and you can back calculate into the activity that you need to have to establish your goals. And you should do that by backwards calculating. All right. If you have questions or you wanna see some concepts or ideas, call me, send me an email. Uh, I can get you the little workbook. It's about 12 pages and it will actually help you back calculate into the activity that you must do. Now realize that activity is, is <laughs> a real easy number, but people have a hard time actually performing that activity. Uh, just pick a number. What do we say? Nine. You realize if you have to talk to nine people a week, let's just say 10 maths becomes easier divided by two. You got to talk to, or divided by five days in a week. You've got to talk to two people every day. Now that's two people that you didn't talk to yesterday. That doesn't count follow up. Follow up is a whole separate item that we're not even talking about. These are two new contacts a day, two new people talking about real estate. I've had agents before go, oh well, yeah, I talked to my uh, receptionist at work. Really, did you talk about real estate or did you just ask her how her day was going? Because that really doesn't count. I'm talking about activity, real estate activity. Are you looking to buy a house? Do you know anyone who's looking to buy a house? Yes or no? That is what I'm talking about, not just discussing. And like I said, if you talked to Bob yesterday and you called Bob back because Bob told you, hey, give me a call back, let me talk to my wife, and you call him on Tuesday, that does not count as one of your two. That was yesterday's two. You've got to get two new ones today. And the reality is, it is a direct proportion activity. You want more money, do more activity. Very simple. Not a lot of thought should go into this, okay? And I can literally point to people that say, I couldn't make it in the business, I quit. And I can literally point to the lack of activity. It is a direct correlation. The more activity you have, the more money you make. Now, can you adjust your goals? I would say yes. I would be hesitant about adjusting your goals downward to meet your activity, to justify yourself what you're doing. Once again, money is the root. Well, the love of money is the root of all evil. So let's make that, that's what the Bible says. It's the love of money, not money. Money is the root that we need. We have to pay bills. We've got kids that go to, go to school, kids want fed. Uh, I want fed, I gotta pay a car payment, I gotta pay a house payment, utility bills. So I would never really adjust my $75,000 goal down to 50 so that it meets my activity and go, look, I met my goal. Now, can you adjust it up? Most certainly, if you have found that talking to two people a day is way easy and you get that done by 8 a.m., you might want to say, you know what, maybe I want to make it four a day and shoot for 150,000 a year. I would have no issue with you raising goals. It's when you lower goals. Usually lowering goals is an indication of you are failing to do the required activity. Now, let me caveat that answer with one other. If you have put an unrealistic goal 
one that should have been caught by your managing broker long before that if you put a goal of 2.8 million and i let you get away with it as an agent i actually did a disservice to you as an agent as your managing broker i should have said look that's not reasonable all right so in a case where you have gotten an unreasonable goal out of the gate then yeah i could potentially maybe see you lowering it um, now, what happens if you don't meet your goals? Well, depends. What happens if you don't pay your electric bill? So you have to understand that not meeting your goals, if your goal is correctly established, let's make that as a ground rule. If your goal is correctly established and you fail to meet the goal, there's going to be a conflict somewhere. Either you weren't able to take that vacation you promised to your spouse, or you're now behind on your car payment, or you weren't able to eat lunch today because you had no money. And eventually what happens is people get out of the business. So what happens if you don't meet your goals? My first answer would be increase your activity. Increase your activity. Now, the second answer is you have to provide, and that may be potentially those people that get out of the business. But I can tell you directly now that your uh, output is directly tied to your activity. All right. So that's about all we're going to talk about goals right now. If you have more questions or you want to see uh, the workbook I've got, feel free to email me. I can get you that workbook. Um, other than that, stick around. We're going to do some more lead generation.